If we're on a multi-day expedition or you want to make a more permanent repair once you get home, um, then you're going to need some form of composite repair kit. Uh, there's a variety of kits available um, with a variety of different materials inside. And I've put together something which is compact, which you could take on a trip with you. And you could do this repair in the shed, on the kitchen table, as we are here, or if you're on an expedition, then in a tent. The key thing is we need to make sure everything is dry before we make a start. If you're on an expedition, you may be able to get the kayak upside down and using the heat from your stove to maybe just dry it out. Or if it's sunshine, then uh, your quid's in there. You can make, um, get the boat dry before you make that make that start on the boat. We've got to make this area clean, we've got a puncture here and uh, we need to keep that nice and flat now so we can make a nice smooth repair. Your boat's made up of various layers of material and that nice shiny outside, this yellow that you can see here, is the gel coat and that's basically a thick layer of protective resin and then on the inside is a series of layers of cloth or material that build up the strength to that resin. Here we're on the outside of the kayak, the gel coat side, but we want to make a more permanent repair, a good repair on the inside. So first thing, we want to try and make the outside smooth and we've got to clear away all this rubbish, the damage that we've created from the, uh, the impact. And just using my knife, or if I was at home, I could use a, a blunt old chisel. We're just going to clean all that away. What we don't want is some loose material hanging around in there. And if anything, we want to try and make a bit of a recess in here. Once we scrape this flat and got it as smooth as possible, we can scrape these fibres away. And what's probably useful, inside the kit there is some sandpaper. We can just make sure they're now nice and smooth and flat. If this was a repair to the outside of the kayak, then we'd have to use the sandpaper over a larger area, which gives the resin a greater area to bond. So ideally you'd want to do this outside, it's a dusty, horrible job, uh, lots of nasty sort of fibres. Uh, you might get a little bit of irritation, this will affect people in, in different ways, quite often around the wrists where you're skin sensitive. If you just run your hands under some cold water, that'll normally wash the fibres away and stop that irritation. We now need to make that basically resin proof and we're just going to use some of our gaffer tape from our gaffer tape kit and just put a patch on the outside to stop the resin running through while we repair the inside. A few patches just to seal the holes. Just to make sure. That now gives us something to work from. So this is the outer skin of our kayak. We're now going to go to the inside, a little more convenient than your kayak, but we're now on the inside of the laminate. We're going to make sure again, this area is sort of clean and dry. Again, you might need to do this with a stove. And is there any loose fibres, anything that's sort of going to get in our way? And that's not too bad with that type of puncture, puncture wound. So I now prepared the area and that's ready for some uh, a laminate to go on top of it and to make it watertight. To give the area a key and to help the resin bond, I'm going to sand the area with the sandpaper. In and around the area and in excess of where the fiberglass cloth is going to go. Inside the kit is a large piece of glass cloth. And ideally when we do a repair, we want to cut a number of circles which slowly increase in size. A couple about the same size as the damaged area and then slowly we increase in size to give it a bit of stiffness and a bit of rigidity. To cut them, you've probably got a pair of scissors inside your first aid kit and you can then cut the circles to the desired size. Bigger hole, bigger circles. In the kit is some epoxy resin. The yellow liquid is a hardener and the clear is the physical resin itself, 100 grams. This will go a long way. Uh, it's pretty nasty stuff, epoxy resin. Some people will develop a, an allergic reaction, but for a one-off use, it's very, very doubtful uh, that you get some sort of skin reaction to that. However, besides that, what we will do is put a pair of rubber gloves on to make sure that we don't get covered in the stuff. 
there's sufficient room in the resin container to take all of the hardener and it's important that you put all that in the container. If it was very very cold you could probably warm this in some warm water by standing the bottle in some warm water and that will bring the temperature of the resin up and will help it cure. Put the lid back on and then you want to give this a really good shake and by actually doing this in your hand you're actually pre-warming the resin as well so that will mix and what we want is a really good uniform colour out of the resin. If you don't think it's mixed sufficiently then there is a stick in the pack, take the lid off and give it a really good mix but if you shake this for two minutes it'll gently warm up the resin and it'll mix it pretty well. I've got a paintbrush which comes in the kit and I'm just going to pour a small amount of resin over this area. Just make sure we wet everything in the area. A little bit more. We've got this here. And this pushing down with the brush is known as a stippling action. We don't paint the resin on. What we're trying to do in a minute when we put the glass cloth in is exclude any air in the, in the glass cloth. So by stippling the brush, squashing the brush down using the fibres of the brush to squash the fibres of the glass, that will get all the air out of the resin. And we're now going to put our first layer on. So right over the patch, a little bit more resin. We don't want to flood the area with resin, but we also don't want to be lean with it. And as you'll see, the piece of cloth has become translucent. You can hardly see it now. So that's telling me I can go for my next layer. I'm going to slowly build the layers up to make this a nice strong repair. If I need a tiny drop of resin, I shouldn't be able to see the fibres. That's what we're trying to achieve. Okay, and our next one. Stipple it down and then if it's looking a little dry, perhaps a wee drop of resin. You're going to try and need to get the kayak so that this area is as flat as possible. You might need to tip the kayak on its side. If you're doing the patch on the side, the resin will tend to drain away from the patch. So try and keep this so that the, the resin drains into the middle of the patch. And you would need at least a minimum of four patches of glass cloth. Slowly working all the air out of it to make a nice strong repair. But we're just going to use one more and the rest can be kept for another day. And this last layer you can probably with some judicial stippling of the brush pull out the last of the resin and avoid making it too resin rich. As you can see, we've not used very much resin at all. The patch inside the kit is about a quarter of a square meter, so it'll do a pretty sizable repair. Uh, this will now go hard and we can't use it for anything else. The only items within the kit that are reusable is the glass cloth, so keep hold of that. The rest of it will all be thrown away once it's cooled down and it's uh, a solid lump. Sometimes you might need a thicker resin. This hole may have been bigger, and we might need to be able to fill that with something to flatten out the hole or we might need a thicker goo to poke down a hole. Classically leaking spot is your toggle hole in a glass kayak. So you might need to put some thicker resin in there to try and stop the boat from leaking from the end toggle. We, inside the kit there's a, some white powder. This is called microbloons. Uh, be careful when you open this because it goes everywhere. And what we're going to do is just a thickening agent and we're going to pour some resin into a, a disposable container. So you might need to do this first if you've got a large hole. And then just gently open this packet. This is definitely a job to be done outside. And just pour a small amount of powder to get the desired thickness that you require. So we've now ended up with a paste, 
which we could now put inside our hole before we put our layers of glass cloth in or we might need to patch something that just needs that thicker resin and this powder would actually do that job for us. Not as strong as a, a laminate made up of glass cloth but a good filling agent that will just uh, bung up a hole and then allow us to put our glass cloth on over the top.